So today I really wanted to address a hard topic and that is patient death. It's a reality of the job, honestly, but it's especially been heightened over these past couple of months because of the pandemic. I'm in internal medicine, so I see this every single day, people in the ICU crashing, um, people dying, and, and I really wanted to make this video just to discuss how I've found a healthier way to cope, to manage, to process through, and just what death means to me as a physician. Um, now this is from a resident's perspective, but I hope that anyone who's watching this, nurses, first responders, um, anyone in healthcare, or anyone who's just grieving, um, finds some hope from this video too. So we somehow get attached to certain patients more than others. I don't know if it's just me, but whether they remind you of your grandparent or they actually laughed at your jokes or if you got to know them and their family in that short period of time that they were in the hospital and um, you just develop this connection to them and that makes it even harder when they end up doing poorly and passing away. It's the fact that we feel like these patients believed in us so much and sometimes more than we think they should have, more than we think we deserved. Um, I can remember patients who called me honey and that's fine with me honestly and it's so hard it's so hard when you aren't able to deliver on that promise i definitely have felt everything from guilt to self-doubt um, feeling like i was an imposter like i shouldn't have done this job. I failed these people. If it gets really bad, it might lead to burnout, that um, you don't have any gratification for the vast majority of people that you do help lead to actually making more mistakes, um, cognitive biases, anyone who wants to check out the heuristics checklist, fallbacks that you might be making mentally and making decisions. At least have a handful of patients in my short um, two years doing this that I think back on and just wonder, could I have helped them? Could I have done something differently? Um, I remember, I don't really remember their names, but I do remember their faces and their families. Just thinking through these next couple of things has really helped me. Um, some of it I've learned along the way. Um, some of it has been through what people have taught me. So I just wanted to pass that along. Number one is just don't grow cold. Don't grow insensitive. Um, a lot of people try to default to just putting up a barrier or a wall and not feeling those emotions. It might help short term, it might make you look stronger or look more professional or seem like you just have it together. In the long run, it's important to admit that you feel grief, that you feel just devastated sometimes, enables us to see each patient as an individual person and not just a disease process, not just a Apache score of a billion and being like, oh, that was going to happen anyway. Not having those emotions doesn't mean that makes you stronger. I think we're far better physicians if we see the reality, see the heart of what we do and the importance of these lives that we're taking care of, having empathy with patients and ourselves. Number two is on the opposite end. I think it's really important to set boundaries for yourself. To some degree, there has to be a disconnect with your work and your personal life and just your personal space. Your bad days don't equate to your worth as a provider. Um, really, people get sick and Sometimes there's only so much we can do. Oh, if I had known that their urine output was going to go down, I would have started more fluids. And a lot of it is retrospective and we can only do so much. The numbers sometimes don't match up with what actually happens in real life. And as sometimes A-type people, that really bothers us. It's ultimately not up to us. Uh, we do our best for them, we fight. So we just ask for a miracle. Number three might be pretty obvious, but a lot harder to do for some people. It's actually talk to others, debrief. At my hospital, we have a code blue committee. So 
we go over all the cases and review what was done well, what could have been done better, any sort of things that could have been missed, and it's both an objective way to improve and find mistakes and not call anybody out, but to learn from. And it's also an opportunity to just open up and share in the experience from other people in the, who had been there and see that really you weren't alone. Um, everyone was in this together and hoped for the best. So I often like to talk to my senior residents and go through the situation and oftentimes they say that they would have done the exact same thing. They couldn't have seen that anything else that could have been done differently or better. Feel encouraged that you were doing the right thing. Number four is actually a little more difficult and it might make some people uncomfortable, but in those situations, when someone has just passed away, the family is gathered, I would spend time with them, with the patient at the bedside, with the family, obviously give them some time, some alone time first to just grieve and get over the shock. But ultimately, I think it gives you closure, it gives families closure to make yourself be vulnerable in that space. Talk to the families, not in a defensive way, just trying to explain unless they ask, of course, but acknowledge that that you are so, so sorry and that you are there for the family as much as you are there for the patient. You might worry that everyone might get angry at you, gang up on you and start accusing you of not saving their mom, but the vast majority of what I've seen is that the families are so grateful for you being there. I can still remember times where families have come up to me and just hugged me and cried and thanked me for being there, for trying our best. They sometimes are there outside in the hallway as we're coding our patients. They see the chest compressions, the shocks, the, the whirlwind of medicines and the blood, the messiness of it all. And they see how much we're, we've tried and how much that maybe it was just time to let go. Really, it's just showing that you're not trying to hide. You're not trying to avoid things like you did something wrong. It's showing that you cared so much about this person that you want to say goodbye, especially as someone who's been on the other side of things as well as a family member of someone who passed away unexpectedly or suddenly that most of the time it's very much appreciated. It's just a really interesting perspective seeing how people process the death of a loved one differently. Some are in shock, some start coming up with all these old memories and honestly it's very much a privilege to be in those situations. Number five is a little cliche but it's very much true and we honestly don't do it enough. It's to take care of yourself and recharge as needed. It's important to grieve, to process through things, but it's also so important to just move on, find what balances you, what brings you joy, brings you back to yourself. And honestly, life does go on after someone dies, and in a way that's actually very beautiful. There's still hope, great things to be done. Now the last one, number six, is what I always come back to when I'm feeling discouraged, burnt out, just forgetting my perspective, is really just to remember why you started, remember why you became a physician. For me, medicine was a calling, like a sacrificial lifestyle, because of medicine, every single day you're reminded of how much there is to be grateful for, you're lucky if your EF is 60%, if your body doesn't attack itself. And then seeing this death again and again, it gets hard, but it's so motivating. It reminds you how important every single moment is, how important each person in front of you is, even if you don't agree with them, even if they frustrate you, even if they aren't listening to you and keep doing all these things that make them sick. Medicine is to see the person in front of you, offer them a chance, time and time again. 
And like I mentioned before, death is normal. It's not something that always means failure. It means more that they lived well, that they died with dignity, and that they had a choice in how they lived. We can help with that. So this was a bit of a heavy topic. I don't know if it's something that we all talk about enough. We all try to debrief, move on, and there's often not time because there's someone in the next room needing us. But I hope that this video puts things a little more to perspective and helps you just start your way, just being good to yourself again and being well. So I hope you guys are staying healthy and staying safe. I think things are starting to look up a little bit. There's bound to be a second wave, honestly, but I think we can take it as it comes. And I am filming this on my off day, so I am going to follow my own advice and try to enjoy the day. Um, it's pretty sunny out. It's finally spring, I think. So anyway, till next time, bye.